Uh, Emma Fryer, costume designer for Lady Chatterley's Lover, an adaptation of one of the most influential novels of the 20th century. Uh, had you read the book before joining the film? A very long time ago, I feel, Joyce. And then I have to admit, I didn't reread the book because I love, I mean, for me, the most brilliant starting point is that script and that the importance of the script. And it was a great script. Um, the first reading of, of it, I think, is as a costume designer, just sitting quietly, that first read is pivotal to just sort of creating pictures in your head and just sort of trying to visualise who these characters are. And sometimes you can go on a whole journey with a character. And I always think you very often come back to those very first thoughts that are actually connected with the first read of a script. Um, so the script is is just so important to me I think and it and it is the a real starting point to any sort of project and reading Lady Chatterley was just yeah it was just joyous actually I was really excited after I'd finished reading it. Mm -hmm. So what were your first thoughts after reading the script? My first well there's it's certainly in terms of it just being very I guess just something that seemed very current today that you that just feels that it could be part of in, ter in, in terms of Connie I think she just feels like she she could be very much a woman of today and Absolutely. certainly yeah there's there was a there's still a sense of a modernness about it which I very much then wanted to actually sort of translate into her costuming um and just, I think there was, a, there's a little bit in it that actually um, just, just definitely something about, there was, there's something about the contemporaneous of it, to her actual journey as a woman today, which is very sort of resonates with women still very much in 2022, which I wanted to actually access and be part of her costuming. Um, and just the sort of her free, she's, she was a very much, comes across as a free spirit, very modern and a real sort of bohemian feel, which are all sort of elements that I very much wanted to actually translate into the wardrobe that she had on the, on the film. Yeah, for sure. I loved all of her dresses. I was like, I, I want those dresses, but no, I, I, I totally agree. And because uh, it, it, the, the book is um, like a, a symbol of freedom of expression still and, and yeah. quality and like, and her owning her body and sexuality. Um, but yeah, I like the, her dresses had a breeziness to them. Like they didn't feel very structured or like overly costume like maybe you would imagine in like a period piece in 20s England like I, I feel like if you just mentioned that to someone they, they would just picture corsets or something or just kind of really like stuffy like big dresses yeah we've kind of we sort of lost because we're late we're sort of so it's world war one we've almost lost we sort of lost the pit we talked a little bit Emma and I but the course it was completely gone on her and there was a at the beginning I felt I wanted her to have a slight sense of more period and feel a bit more buttoned up but then certainly once we get to rugby and we've gone from winter through to sort of into the spring and then the whole relationship starts developing with Mellors I really wanted there to be a, a looseness to her and and have these sort of sensual contours and and I think what was oh, what was just so what I just feel still feel so much about this job is that and it should happen on every job is that the mood boards that were done at the very beginning really came to life and they really truly actually did translate into Connie's final wardrobe um and there was a real you know there was a there's a real sense of definitely there's a loss the rigidness of the earlier part of the Edward one is 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 very much gone um and there's a looseness to her costuming which I think Benoit the DOP sort of almost that's almost in the cinematography as well which is which is which is a lovely sort of connection um I think in my head there was a 
there was a the bohemianness in my head I had sort of Kate Moss at Glastonbury Festival <laughs> there was a, that sense of you know not not that Connie has got Wellington boots but the sense of kind of a real juxtaposition of Wellington boots and then sort of really lightweight sheer fabrics and embroidery on glaze and muslins and a little bit of layering and um, certainly that I I sort of wanted to actually breathe into the costume once we started having sort of the once the affair actually starts happening with Mellors. Um, so the 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 seasonal changes in the script had a had a importance to the journey of the costuming, and certainly had a you know we went from rich exotic sort of tweeds and velvets to then lightweight summer fabrics, lots of sheer layering. Um, and just even underneath those sort of, there was, I used some, we, we had a mix of making because some of, a lot, there was tailoring in Connie's costumes or making, we had a, a making department that actually made for Connie. Some of the costumes were sort of original, authentic costumes from the period. And then I actually did introduce some high street labels that I just felt really work so well for the Yeah, because there is a, a time of a, a type of a timeliness and uh, modernness to it because it, it like you said it feels like very bohemian and just it more, yeah. more casual than you might imagine like 20s England to be. Yeah so. there mm -hmm. was um, a sense of this sort of sense that I mean it's I think it is really great if you can think of a character now in your so we are so we were sort of you know 1919 almost 1920 and who if Connie was in the world now in 2022 who would she be would she be this bohemian kind of you know young woman who was at art college mixing sort of like interesting fabrics together and her lace-up leather boots and 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 I think I really wanted that feeling with her character if there's a sense of seeing even though we are in a period world, but still sort of visualizing who that person is in the world that we live in now. Um, mm. And certainly in the fitting with Emma, it was, we had such fun <laughs> because I think the clothes, because the clothes we felt, even though they were, you know, they still have the, but their clothes that certainly I would be, Emma would be happy to wear today. And yeah, I don't think yeah. even, and, 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 nobody would you know look at them as as strictly period clothes um but equally still still along the journey it's it's still about character as much you know you're still creating the right clothes for the character and bring and going on a journey together with an actor to to actually bring this character to life yeah um, um, well, you, you referenced this before, but I also love how the color palette with her wardrobe um, evolves, like Connie uh, uh, in the beginning, like she still feels trapped at this stage. So she's in darker tones and like you said, like tweeds, but then after she meets Oliver, it's brighter colors and he's, his silhouette is blue. And then mm -hmm. she's like, there's more blue incorporated in her, uh, her wardrobes. Uh, so how did you go about like kind of just melding their two silhouettes together and having her like I her costume awakening I guess when after she meets him um I mean I thought about Mellas a lot at the beginning and, and it's I very much looked in it and I mean we had obviously we've got a friend we had a French lovely French director and a lovely French DOP and then looking at because I always start still looking at the original period reference because I think you've got to you always you have to start with your period reference and then you can sort of twist it or turn it or slightly change it um so very much did with Mellis but I didn't want to go down that route of him being in the world of which is probably true the period sort of darker fabrics browns leathers um a very big thought was just the environment that we were filming in once they leave London and just you know we are we were actually filming in these amazing, in the amazing Welsh countryside and our backdrop is nature. Um, and so a lot of the backdrop 
is green and working with that as a color palette and then contrasting the costume against that. And so I think that's why in my head, Mellors very much ended up in a sort of blue, just wanted to change the workwear clothing and loved the idea of just going into a, a blue palette, but layering it with different sort of different sort of textures and different colors of blue. Um, and in terms of Connie, it just was, it was, it was still very script driven in regard to still the seasonal changes. Um, and then just because I did want her to start off a lot darker. And then as we go from the London world, then we go to rugby, we have that a little splash of the red dress that she wore at the May Day Festival. And then as the affair sort of develops, there was quite a lot. It was, the, there were, the, the fabrics were quite sheer and a lot of them were quite see-through. So, which worked really well in terms of sort of the journey and, and the script. But then I did layer that with really lots of sort of, lots of very fine petticoat. She had some really lovely little camisoles tops and, and just, just little details of lace and embroidery and embroidery on glaze. Yeah, I love fabric. the yellow one, her, her yellow shawl. Yeah. Yeah. And then I and then splashing, I, I just splashing a bit of color in a belt or something that she had around her waist. So even though there were all these really sort of fine white cotton costumes, like there was a little sort of peach underneath, and then a stronger color around her waist. Um, we did. I don't know. We did. I did do the a sort of version of a teens velvet hoodie top which she wears quite at the beginning in that rust color <laughs> um but Benoit was great because he came to the costume house quite early on and we we had quite a, you know he came with law and we were talking about where we were filming and again we were talking about you know the wild wells the nature the welsh countryside and the, the fact she's sort of trapped in the world at the beginning and then she goes to rugby and then the sort of freedom that she that her sort of she, her change with Mellors and how she becomes free um and that the freedom to go into the woods and the, and the meadows and so there was there was quite a lot of conversation of 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 color palette against nature actually and and sometimes it sits quietly and other times it was sort of jumping out a little bit more um, but that was sort of dependent on the sequence of, of a scene or what the journey that she was going on that actual story day and sort of plotting that through as we were as we were sort of going through the movie. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. um, well, they were all completely enviable costumes. I, I want all of it. <laughs> Gorgeous. Um, Emma, thank you so much for your time. It was great speaking with you uh, and congratulations on the film again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you.